Hey guys, welcome back. So as part of this video, we're going to talk about the different approaches using which producer sends the message um, to the broker. So there are three approaches. One is send and forget, second is synchronous send, and another is asynchronous send. So as part of the last video, we saw the approach, the first approach, where, where we use the send method and, um, and we forget. So what do you mean by send and forget? So let's look at this um, approach quickly. So if you look at here in the sample producer, here we just call the send method and we we are not waiting for the response back from the um, uh, broker, whether the message is really delivered or not. So most of the cases, the message gets delivered uh, because Kafka has a fault tolerant features and also producer has um, the retry mechanism, which is configurable, which you saw in the last video, uh, where you can um, provide the uh, how many retries you want to do um, in case of uh, recoverable errors. So producer will take care of retrying um, for those uh, scenarios. So what I mean to say is um, most of the cases, the message reaches to the broker and it gets delivered. But in case of high volumes, um, sometimes uh, the messages may uh, get lost. And uh, if you don't want to afford uh, losing your messages and you want to capture the failure scenarios or failure messages, um, for that, you should use the other approaches which I had uh, talked about, the synchronous send and asynchronous send. But uh, which approach is the best approach, um, you may be wondering, right? So we'll, we'll uh, talk about that one after um, finishing the discussion about the different approaches. So these are approaches which we have already discussed. Um, let's look at the second approach, which is called synchronous producer, uh, synchronous send. So we've already written this uh, program and um, we're going to um, explain you uh, what it does. So um, we have already discussed this uh, creating properties objects, setting this uh, attributes like bootstrap servers, uh, key serializer, value serializer. Um, I can again talk about this one. So the first uh, here is you create a properties object and then you set the attributes called bootstrap server, which is nothing but your brokers. And we give a um, list of uh, broker uh, brokers here. Um, you should give more than one. Uh, the reason is like you know, if one node goes down, another can take care of it. So that's the reason we give list of brokers address here. And then the key serializer value serializer, which are required to serialize your Java objects to byte array because Kafka understands only the byte array. It doesn't understand any other type of data. Um, then uh, you create a uh, producer instance by um, passing the properties object um, uh, to the Kafka producer constructor. Then the uh, next step is we created the producer record where um, we pass uh, the topic name and the value. You can uh, pass the key as well and you can pass the partition as well that we already discussed as part of the last video. If you pass the partition name, then default partitioner of Kafka is disabled and you can send your message to that partition name if you provide like partition two or three or whatever based on your partitions which you have defined uh, while creating the topic. So it will go to the same partition um, always. Or if you pass the key, then it will go to the, um, uh, I mean the Kafka will uh, have a hashing key mechanism by using which it creates a, a random partition number. And to that, if you send the same message key always, it will go to the same partition. So. Uh, Kafka has a mechanism, hashing mechanism which determines which partition it has to go. So anyway, so as part of this video, this is not the thing which you're going to discuss. The main thing which you're going to discuss is the send method, synchronous send. So synchronous send, what it does is um, when you call um, a dot send method here, uh, it returns a um, Java future. And um, in the Java future, you, you, you do a dot get, um, uh, you get an acknowledgement um, as record metadata if it is success. And from that metadata, you can get your partition and offset where your message is, um, get, I mean, a message has been delivered to. So if you run this program, um, so here the message has been uh, sent to partition number two and offset 248. So as we have uh, given here um, partition number, so it is getting delivered to, um, same partition, uh, partition number two, but if you run like this,
see it went to partition 0 and offset 139 so now let's look at the consumer so you get this message back here in the consumer as well so uh, let's uh, change this one to value 6 and run this again so message sent to partition 0 and offset 140 simple value 6 and as I said um, it goes to the same partition if you provide the same same message same key so if you change the key name so it went to the different partition so so the Kafka um, determines I mean Kafka generates a partition number based on the key and it uh, sends the message to the particular partition and and it gets to the and we print the offset here as part of the metadata right which we received as part of the synchronous send so but the so here is the problem the synchronous send in synchronous send you need to wait for the response um, from the broker after you send the message to the broker so you need to wait for the um, first message to get it back the response the first message response um, before sending the second message to uh, the broker so it's a costly affair so what next uh, the next is asynchronous producer this is the right way to use and this is the best way uh, how this asynchronous producer work so in case of asynchronous producer you um, um, provide a callback method uh, while making a well making a send method well calling the send method so in the send method you pass the record and uh, provide the callback so producer will um, invoke the callback method uh, by passing the record metadata and the exception object if it is uh, exception is null then you don't need to do anything but if it is not null then you need to capture that um, error for your future reference and to see why it failed what happened and like you know and you need to take pro appropriate action and all so um, yeah so that's all about this um, asynchronous send uh, as I said which is the best way to use um, and yeah and so last finally we close this producer um, to release the resources which producer requires so that's all um, we as part of this video then we saw uh, the send and forget approach and we saw the um, synchronous way of sending the message and we saw the asynchronous way of sending the message so asynchronous way of sending the message uh, provides the same throughput um, or the same performance as the send and forget approach uh, provides so um, it's always better to use the asynchronous way of sending the message to the broker where at least um, um, you don't worry about the success or failure where after sending the message your callback will take care of it like you know in later point of time your um, as part of the callback you can get the errors and you can handle the error at the later point of time as I said so um, that's all about this video thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next set of videos where we're gonna um, build end-to-end -end application with Spring Boot with um, Kafka and Couchbase.